What's up guys, we're back with NBA action here on Friday, April 12th. We're going over a ton of games with an NBA wide day off coming up on Saturday. The Thursday games haven't all finished yet, but we did get the New York Knicks minus two and a half or plus one or minus one, whatever you guys got them at. We cashed that one pretty easily. The Knicks had a blowout style win lined up before eventually only winning by nine, but that was more than enough for us. That was one of our main picks today. The other ones we still have going on right now. We see the Pelicans are leading right now. Hopefully they can finish that one off. That was one of our favorite picks of the day and one of our favorite NBA picks in quite a while. The Warriors and the Blazers is still going on. The Rockets and the Jazz are still going on. We're hoping for the under in that Warriors game. But other than that, there wasn't a ton to love out there on this pretty short Thursday slate. Regardless, we've got a million games here coming up on Friday. We've got a ton to jump into. For all of you MLB fans out there, don't worry. We're going to be getting back to MLB action here on Saturday. So just hold your horses for one more day and we'll be back in the baseball streets. Take a second and hit that like button to show some support for the channel and all the work we're putting in here every single day. If you're new, take a second and subscribe. It's 100 100% free and can keep you from missing out on these picks. These videos are sponsored by SomeThisRed.com. Click the link in the description and go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today and we will give you our best advice on all of them. We respond to absolutely every single comment, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day, the Orlando Magic going on the road to take on the Philadelphia 76ers. This is a big game in terms of seeding here in the Eastern Conference. Conference, we see that Orlando is currently in the five seed, but they're only a single game up on the 76ers who are currently in the seven seed. Philly has been holding on, trying to work their way out of the play-in tournament ever since getting Embiid back, and now they're going to get their chance. We see Orlando, they're coming into this game looking relatively healthy. The only person on their injury list right now is Franz Wagner. He's technically questionable for this game with an ankle injury. He has missed his last two games due to that ankle sprain, so you would hope that he's going to be in line to come back for this one as it's a super, super important game, but right now, given the spread on this this game, it's kind of looking like there's a very reasonable chance that he may not suit up for this game. Orlando in general has not been having a great time lately. They've lost three of their last four overall with their only win coming against the Bulls. They lost to the Bucks, the Rockets, and they lost to the lowly Charlotte Hornets during that spread. So not exactly playing their best ball this season, which is pretty disappointing from a team that's had a good year overall and definitely have some playoff aspirations depending on where their seeding ends up. But it's definitely more important that they get Wagner ready for the postseason rather than worrying too much about where they end end up in this one. If they end up in the play-in tournament, they shouldn't be too scared. They can definitely make their way into the final draw through there. There's not going to be a whole lot of super tough competition down there, it doesn't look like to me. The 76ers come into this game playing great. They've won six in a row now. We see both Kyle Lowry and Embiid on the injury report, but really we have every indication that at least Embiid will be playing. I doubt we see him sit out now that he's come back and has looked so good. There really hasn't been any reason to think he's re-aggravated that knee at all, and Lowry, that's not really the biggest deal to us. If he sits out, we're not going to lose too much sleep over that. We've seen Tyrese Maxey play absolutely insane lately. And the 76ers, while they've had a relatively easy stretch of schedule here, they're playing really, really well. They're just taking care of business against all these bad teams. They easily won against Detroit. They won a kind of close, kind of competitive game against the San Antonio Spurs, which right now, Wemby is very, very hard to stop. We see the Grizzlies. They got an easy win against them. They played a close one against the Heat, but got the win. And they played a close one against the Thunder and got a win in that one. But it was a very close game, like I said. And it wasn't really against the 100% strength uh, Thunder team. So regardless though, getting the wins is what matters right now. And Philadelphia has definitely been doing that. Coming into this game, we see the spread is at minus seven for the 76ers. I think they have a decent chance at covering that number if we see Wagner not in this game. That does feel like kind of a lot of points for a game that's going to have a playoff type atmosphere. But really the way Orlando's been playing right now has me very, very worried. And if Wagner's not out there, Franz that is, we don't really care if Mo Wagner plays or not. We're going to be pretty concerned about them being able to produce enough offense with Paolo out there kind of by himself. So you can give me a taste of the 76ers minus seven. I don't know if that's going to be one of our core plays in this game, but regardless, I think there's some decent value there on Philly. Looking at the over under in this game, it's a very small number. It's only 211 and a half. We see not really very many meaningful trends in this one. We see both teams basically 500 over under teams. I do expect something of a playoff atmosphere in this game, and I don't think it'll be the highest pace game either with these two teams. I don't really see a ton of getting up and down the court. We know Embiid's not going to be really wanting to get up and down a whole bunch, but lately we've been seeing the 76ers put up some pretty respectable offensive numbers, albeit against some bad teams. But Orlando is pretty solid defensively. So in this game, I guess you could give me a slight taste of the over since this is such a small number and Philadelphia is putting up some relatively big numbers. But I think both squads are going to kind of slow it down in this one. So your guess is as good as mine on the over under in this guys. But we definitely like Philadelphia minus seven. That's our best value that I see on this game. Next up, we've got 
<clears throat> Next up, we got the Chicago Bulls going on the road to take on the Washington Wizards. Chicago has solidified their spot in the nine seed. They're going to have home court advantage here in the first round of the play-in tournament. So in that game against the Bulls and the Hawks, it looks like Chicago is going to be at home in that one. Washington has obviously solidified themselves as completely out of the playoff picture for quite some time now. We see Chicago comes into this game fresh off of a blowout win last night against the Detroit Pistons. And given this extremely small spread in this game, I think it's fairly safe to say that we're going to see a lot of Chicago's main players sitting this game out. The Bulls haven't been playing for particularly well down the stretch here. We did see DeRozan play really well in this last game last night putting up 39 points against the Pistons. Not a huge accomplishment, but we'll take it for what it's worth. He had a good night shooting the ball. There's no way around that. The Wizards come into this game. They're finishing things off kind of how you would expect. They've lost four in a row. They just lost by nine points at the Timberwolves, so at least they kept that game relatively competitive. The question for the Wizards will be who's actually going to be healthy for this game. We see that Kuzma and Jordan Poole are both on the injury report. That's going to be pretty important for us to look at, pretty important for us to find out whether or not those guys are going to actually play in this game. It looks like Kuzma has been ruled out for Friday, so we don't have to worry about that. He will not be out there. And with Poole listed as questionable due to a non-COVID illness, I think it's relatively uh, likely that we see him sit that game out as well. So going to be really hard to peg whether we're going to which team we're going to see win in this one in a battle of a lot of backups. I guess the Wizards are more likely to be used to playing their backups at least, and the Bulls don't have Andre Drummond anymore. He's out with that broken leg, so I guess give me a small taste of the Wizards in this game, but I'm not going to have too much interest in this spread as there's so much uncertainty. We do see that Washington is a near league worst 14-25-1 against the spread at home, so that kind of makes me lean towards the Bulls. Your guess is as good as mine on this one, guys. Looking at the over-under in this game, we're not going to expect a ton of points as we're going to have so many second-string players in there. So definitely give me under 221.5. I think that's the value side on this game that is going to be extremely uninteresting. Next up, we've got the Indiana Pacers going on the road to take on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Indiana comes into this game. They're sitting in the sixth seed in the East right now. They're out of that play-in tournament, but they're going to have to finish things off strong. Their game against the Cavaliers has lots of implications as that four seed is still very much up for grabs between the Cavaliers, the Magic, the Pacers, and the Philadelphia 76ers, I would say, although that's getting a little bit sketchy at this point. But regardless, this game has major implications in the seeding right now. We see the Pacers are playing pretty well coming into this game. They've won three in a row and five of their last six overall. Health-wise, Indiana is looking like they're at full strength, so that's great news from them. We've seen Halliburton playing well lately and kind of just up and down the roster. Everybody's looked pretty good. They just had a nice get-right game in Toronto. They won one 40 to 123, getting effectively a practice game in against the Raptors, who are playing absolutely no one at this point in their season. So we're expecting the Pacers to be in a pretty good spot in this one. The Cavaliers have not been finishing their regular season off very strong at all. They lost three straight coming into their game against the Grizzlies, which they used that one as kind of a practice game, although they only won by 12. So not exactly a huge blowout. In terms of health right now, we see the Cavaliers are also healthy. They've got everybody rested and ready to go. Well, maybe not rested, but definitely ready to go. Donovan Mitchell hasn't played a ton of games this season so he should have plenty left in the tank here at the end of the year. The question is really how well can this roster like mesh together? The Garland and Donovan Mitchell pairing hasn't really looked amazing and we haven't seen Mobley or Jared Allen really take the steps forward that we thought they would this season. So it's going to be kind of odd to see what this team can do here heading into the playoffs and what kind of seeding they're going to end up with, whether or not they can win this game. Looking at the spread in this one, we see that it's the Cavaliers minus three. We see the Pacers are 21 and 17 against the spread on the road. So not terrible. Cleveland's 17, 20 and one against the spread and playing at home. So guys, I think we lean towards the Indiana Pacers here a decent amount. Looking at the season series in this one, we see that Indiana has won two of three, although those wins were very early in the season and back on the 18th of last month, we saw the Cavaliers get a five point win. Right now, I like how the Pacers are playing. I don't really like how we're seeing the Cavaliers look down the stretch here. Give me Indiana and the points in this one. I think they find a way in this game. Looking at the over under, it's a very big number. It's 232 and a half, which is kind of what you would expect to see from these two high powered offensive teams. Interestingly enough, though, Cleveland is 21-16-1 to the over at home, but we see Indiana is 21-16-2 to the under when playing on the road. Not going to be on the over-under in this game, guys. Just give me the Pacers plus three. Next up, we've got the Brooklyn Nets going on the road to take on the New York Knicks. The Knicks won last night pretty handily against the Boston Celtics, who pulled all their starters at the end of the third quarter. The Nets come into this game. They're kind of just finishing off their end of their season, kind of doing whatever. They're definitely trying to win games, though, but they only won by four points against the Toronto Raptors, a team that's definitely not trying to win games 
games right now, so that's a little embarrassing, but regardless, winning three of your last four overall is an accomplishment for the Nets, heading into their last two games of the season. Cam Thomas has been playing really well. He was a big part of how they came back in that game, but more important was Dennis Schroeder. He scored 15 of his 21 points in the fourth quarter to get that comeback win. Too bad there's really nothing for the Nets to be playing for at this point in the season. Right now, it's looking like they're relatively healthy overall. We do see Dorian Finney-Smith possibly out, Dennis Smith Jr. possibly out, so they're not exactly like running everybody out there, but they don't really need to be doing that. There's really not a lot of incentive for them to be winning games right now. Unlike some of the tanking teams, though, there's no incentive for them to be winning games either. And they're taking on a team that definitely is incentivized to win right now. The Knicks find themselves only a single game back of the Milwaukee Bucks here with two games to go. And they're only a single game up on the Cleveland Cavaliers. So the Knicks are definitely looking to hold on to that two or maybe three seed out there in the Eastern Conference. It'll be very impressive for them to finish that high. And they've got a decent chance to do that, although they are playing on back-to-back -back nights. Looking at the injury report for the Knicks, right now they are fresh off that game, so things could change. But right now they look completely healthy. A lot of their starters didn't play full minutes in that game, so they don't have to worry too much about that. We saw Brunson, Ananobi, Josh Hart, everybody really looked good in that game. Hartenstein has looked fantastic now in the starting role. Like, this team is looking very, very good. They're going to be a tough out for anybody in the Eastern Conference playoffs. I think they really have to be considered the second best team in the East right now behind the Celtics even though they just won that game. It was their first win of the year against the Celtics. So like, that's, let's not freak out about that. But I think they're clearly a better team than the Bucs. I think they're clearly better than pretty much anybody out in the East except for the Celtics. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see that the Knicks are minus 10 and a half. So that's a pretty big number. Looking at the season series, we see the Knicks have won all three games, but only one of them was by enough points to cover this number. That's a little bit concerning for me. I think the Nets are going to be kind of highly motivated. But the bigger problem in this one is we see Brooklyn is only 13 and 25 against the spread playing on the road. The Knicks are 21-17-1 against the spread at home, so that looks pretty good. But the concern is that the Knicks are only 4-8 and eight against the spread on no rest. Guys, this is kind of a tough one. I'm not in love with this game, but I think the value in this one is on the Nets, plus 10.5. I think they find a way to keep this game at least competitive against what's going to be a slightly tired Knicks team. So that's my lean against the number, but looking at the over-under in this one, we see that the Nets are basically a 50-50 team when playing on the road, but the Knicks are a huge under team at home. They're 26-13 and 13 to the under playing in Madison. Madison Square Garden. So that's definitely something to take into account. I guess you give me a small taste of the under. This is a game I'm a little bit scared of, but I think the combination of the nets and the points and the under in this game makes a good amount of sense to me. Next up, we got the Toronto Raptors going on the road to take on the Miami Heat. Toronto comes into this game as one of the hardest tanking teams in the NBA. They haven't had anything to play for in quite some time, but we see the Heat with quite a bit still to play for. It does look fairly likely that they're going to be in that play-in tournament, but they're only two games back in the Indiana Pacers, so if things break right, they do have a chance to move on up. And they definitely, only a single game back in the Philadelphia 76ers, have a chance to snag that seven seed, which can help you in that play-in tournament for sure. The Raptors come into this game fresh off of a four-point loss at Brooklyn. They lost that one to the Nets. They gave up a fourth quarter lead. Didn't look too good down the stretch in that game, which makes sense as this squad is honestly just trying to lose as many games as possible right now. It does currently look like we're going to see RJ Barrett and quickly both play in this game, but I'm always a little bit suspicious. We could see late scratches from the Raptors, so keep an eye on that. They're trying to make sure they lose as many games as possible. They don't want to sneak some wins here at the end of the season and mess up their draft odds, and they've been doing a pretty good job of losing games down the stretch here. They did win two back-to-back, -back, so that was a little bit against what the plan is right now, but just in general, they're doing a pretty good job of tanking things out. We see the Heat coming into this game. They haven't really been playing that well down the stretch, which is unusual for the Heat at this time of year. Usually they're putting in some of their best performances here at the end of the year. They did just lose pretty convincingly to the Dallas Mavericks. In terms of their injury report, we see that Miami is going to have pretty much everybody ready to go. Terry Rozier is dealing with a neck issue. He's technically questionable for this game. It would be his third straight game out. They really need to have him healthy for what is looking like a likely play-in tournament appearance, so maybe he will end up sitting this game out. It's going to be very important to know whether he's in there or not, but right now we're seeing the spread in this game is pretty crazy. It's the Raptors plus 14 and a half. We're definitely going to be on the Raptors plus 14 and a half. I know it doesn't feel great to be betting on a terrible team who's actively trying to lose games right now, but as long as we see quickly and RJ Barrett in the lineup, we're definitely going to be on the Raptors plus this big number. Toronto is a respectable 20, 18, and 1 against the spread on the road. We see the Heat are a terrible 15 and 24 against the spread when playing at home, so definitely give me the Raptors and the points in this one. It could be one of our bigger bets. Make sure to check that pinned comment down below and hit that thumbs up button while you're at it. But regardless, we're going to take the Toronto Raptors and the points 
points in this game as long as we see quickly and Barrett out there. Looking at the over under for this game, we see it's at a pretty low number. It's 216 and a half. Toronto is a big over team when playing on the road. Miami's basically a 50 50 team. So you could convince me to take a little taste of the over in this game. But regardless, that's not going to be our main focus. The main focus is this injury report for the Raptors. And if RJ Barrett and quickly are going to be in there, definitely give me Toronto and the points. Next up, we got the Los Angeles Lakers going on the road to take on the Memphis Grizzlies. The Lakers come into this game fresh off back to back losses. They're having a little bit of trouble closing things out here at the end of the year, and it's looking very reasonable that they could end up not in the nine seed, but actually in the 10 seed. They're only a half game up on the Warriors right now, but the Warriors are currently playing a pretty close game against the Portland Trailblazers, so who knows? Anything could happen here down the stretch. But regardless, the main point of that is the Lakers have something to play for here at the end of the year. Right now, injury report. Shocker of the year has both LeBron and Anthony Davis on it. I think we can definitely expect LeBron to play in this game. The real question mark is Anthony Davis. He's listed as probable for this game, so I guess there's a lot of faith that he's going to play, and you would think a game against the Grizzlies is where he would actually show up. LeBron is technically questionable, but I do expect him to play in this game as well. The Lakers have plenty to play for here in terms of seeding, so they're definitely going to want to have their best chance to get this win, albeit over a bad Grizzlies team who comes into this game losers of three in a row. Memphis has had a season from hell. There's no way around that. Right now, looking at their injury report, we see Kennard, Vince Williams Jr., and Asante Aldama are all listed as out for this game. Contra's out. Brandon Clark is out. Lamar Stevens is out. There's tons of injuries on this lineup. We don't even, we're not going to see Jaron Jackson Jr. out there anymore. We're not going to see Desmond Bain out there. This squad is not even anywhere close to an NBA caliber squad. So not a lot of faith in the Grizzlies right now. We do see that the Lakers are only 17 and 21 against the spread when playing on the road. So not a great number. Memphis is only 15 and 24 against the spread at home. So that's pretty terrible. If you really want to bet this game, I would say go ahead and take the Lakers minus 14, but I'm going to be staying off of that. Looking at the over under for this game, it's 228. The Lakers are definitely an over team when playing on the road. The Grizzlies, however, are are definitely an under team when playing at home so those are some pretty conflicting numbers there guys there's just not a lot to find on this game you might be able to find some decent props on it in terms of lakers players to do well or guys like scotty pippen jr who would normally put up very low numbers to maybe get some numbers in this game but regardless if you really want to bet this one go ahead and take the lakers minus 14 and if you want to get on the over under in this game i would say maybe 10 towards the over as the lakers might not play any offense but honestly guys never mind don't even take any part of this over under I have no idea. You're on your own on that one. If you really want to bet this game, though, Lakers minus 14. Next up, we got the Atlanta Hawks going on the road to take on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Atlanta comes into this game. They don't really have a lot to play for right now. They are locked into that 10 seed in the Eastern Conference. They're going to be playing a play-in game matchup against the Chicago Bulls just for a chance to make it in. So we'll see how that actually goes, but it's not really going to matter because neither one of those teams is going to do well against their other opponents that are going to end up in the play-in, whether it's the Heat, the 76ers, the Pacers, or the Magic. So regardless, I don't think that matters too much. So Atlanta doesn't have anything to play for right now, and I would assume that's going to be reflected in their injury report. And we see Deontay Murray, Jalen Johnson, and Clint Capella all on their injury report. So I expect some, if not all of those guys to sit out. We do see Trey Young coming back. So that's kind of interesting. In his first game back, he looked very, very good. He scored 14 points in 21 minutes. He didn't miss a field goal attempt. So he looked ready to go out of the gate. Good for him. It was against the Charlotte Hornets and he did have five turnovers in that game. So we're not exactly going to throw him a parade, but he looked good in his first game action back. So maybe they can surprise somebody in the play-in tournament. We'll We'll have to see though. His presence does make a difference in this game though for sure. It looks like he'll likely be playing in this game to get some reps in. We also have some interesting injury news for their opponent. The Minnesota Timberwolves is reported that Cat is going to be back for this game. He's expected to make his return to the lineup here on Friday. And the Timberwolves definitely need to finish strong here if they want any chance of that one seed. They're a single game back of the Denver Nuggets. We see Oklahoma City is tied with the Timberwolves. So it's very up in the air still who's going to finish first, second, and third in the Western Conference. Very exciting to see this come down here to the last minute. We see the Timberwolves injury report. Obviously, it's improving with Carl Anthony Towns going to be back in the lineup. And other than that, we have to be very happy for them. They have no injuries to report. So things are looking very, very good. I guess technically Towns is questionable for this game, but all reports are stating that this is his comeback. This is a slated like spot. He's good to go. So we definitely expect him to play in this game. And it seems like the odds makers do too, because we've got the Timberwolves minus 12 and a half in this one. Kind of an interesting spot with how well Trey Young played in his first game back. I kind of expect a little bit of regression. And we can look at Atlanta. They're 13 and 25 against the spread when playing on the road this season. So that's nearly worst number but it's not like minnesota is absolutely tearing it up against the spread at home they're only 18 19 and 2 against the spread playing on their home court so minus 12 that seems like a lot of points in this one i tend to look towards the timberwolves regardless though so 
this is, could be kind of a close spot. It's weird with so many Atlanta Hawks players sitting out and how many minutes are the Timberwolves really going to want to play their starters in this one? And could the return of Cat kind of mess up some things for them and leave some openings? Looking at the over-under in this game, it's currently at 225 and a half. We don't see any major trends. Minnesota is slightly an under team when playing at home. And with a lot of the Hawks players sitting out, I think we could see a little bit less than the normal amount of offense. But once again, guys, this is a tough spot for me. You can give me a small taste of the under as both of these teams trend towards the under. And I don't think either one of them is going to be taking this thing super seriously. The Timberwolves will look to lock this one up pretty early, I think, and then want to get their main players off the court so they can get some rest in with the playoffs looming. Next up, we got the Milwaukee Bucks going on the road to take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Bucks come into this game winners of the last two in a row. They played one of their best games recently in their win over the Orlando Magic. We actually saw the Bucks get a comfortable win there without Giannis even playing in that game, so that's a pretty impressive performance from them. They haven't had all that much success it doesn't feel like this year. It's weird to say that for a team that's going to win 50 games this season, but things just haven't looked the best. Their injury report does not look the best in coming into this game either. We see Dame, Middleton, Giannis, and Brooke Lopez all on the injury report. We do not expect Giannis to play in this game. He's definitely going to be out for these last regular season games, and there's a very real possibility we could see him miss time here in the playoffs, which would be an absolute disaster for the Bucs. I mean, probably they could make it past an opening round opponent without him, but it depends on who they face. If they draw somebody like the Heat in the first round, like that's going to get really, really scary, really, really fast. We see Brooke Lopez is questionable for this game. He can end up resting. We see Middleton is questionable. He could be out with his ankle issue. We see Dame Lillard is listed as doubtful for this game with a left abductor soreness. So just in general, it looks like the Bucks are not going to be putting very many players out there on the floor, and they're going up against a Thunder team that still has plenty to play for. OKC has won their last three in a row. They absolutely dismantled the San Antonio Spurs their last time out. That was a game where we saw the Spurs not play Wembenyama, so that immediately downgrades them to like a below G League level team but still a win is a win and the Thunder have been looking very very good since they've started to get healthy here SGA missing time was tough for them but he's back he's ready to go right now we see Dort as the only person listed on their injury report and it seems like he's very likely to play he sat out that game against the Spurs just for rest no actual injury designation so I think we can safely assume that the Thunder are going to have everybody they need in this game they're only minus 10 and a half in this one we see the Bucks are not a very good against the spread team on the road they're only 16 and 22 against the spread playing away from home the Thunder are 25 and 14 against the spread at home themselves only 10 and a half points in this one against the Bucks like second and third stringers give me Oklahoma City minus 10 10 and a half. This is one of my favorite bets of the day. We'll definitely be on this one in a big way. We like it a lot. Looking at the over under in this game, we're not too interested in this. It's at 223 and a half. We see Milwaukee is slightly an under team playing on the road, but the Thunder are slightly an over team at home. So not going to be on the over under in this game, but give me a big, big chunk of that Oklahoma City Thunder minus 10 and a half. Next up, we've got the Denver Nuggets going on the road to take on the San Antonio Spurs. Denver will be focused on getting the win in this game to lock up that top spot in the Western Conference. They were all over the place this season early on with some injuries and just some like slightly ineffective play and maybe just a little chunk of waiting for the regular season to be over with. This is a team that's focused on winning another championship and they have to be considered, in my opinion, the favorites to win that championship. The Nuggets come into this game fresh off of a blowout win, or it felt like a blowout there at the end, at least win over the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Nuggets injury report is actually looking pretty weird right now. They actually have all five of their starters on there, but listed as probable. I think they'll likely play in this game, but I do think there's a decent chance they might not play their full complement of minutes. It might depend a little bit on what they're seeing from the other teams, the Thunder and the Timberwolves that are involved with them in that race for the top spot. And while I do think the Nuggets really do want that top seed in the West, I think they're much more focused on making sure everybody is healthy. Go Going into the playoffs, they're not really expecting a super cakewalk in the first round necessarily with a bunch of scary teams down there in the play-in tournament. So I think they're going to be focused on health, but also I do think the majority of their starters are going to play in this game. The big question always facing the Spurs every game now here at the end of the season is whether or not Wemby is going to play. He's not on the injury report, so I do expect him to play in this game. The Spurs in general have not been looking amazing. I mean, shocker of the century. They're really not putting anything around Wembenyama right now. They have gone two and two over their last four games. They had a win over the Pelicans and a win over the Memphis Grizzlies. So not exactly crazy wins, but that win over the Pelicans is a pretty good one. So just regardless, when Wemby's out there, this team definitely has a chance. He's looking like an absolute monster right now. The Spurs are a decent against the spread team at home, and the Nuggets are not a very good against the spread team on the road. I think we take San Antonio plus 10 and a half in this one. I'm not going to be on this game huge, but I'm definitely going to be on it as long as Wemby's in the lineup. It'd be great if we could see a Nuggets starter or two end up sitting this game out or only playing like half the game. But regardless, we like Wemby to make this game competitive. 
competitive, especially playing at home in front of San Antonio fans. He's been putting on shows for them time after time, so I definitely like San Antonio plus 10.5, a good amount in this game. Looking at the over-under, we see that the Nuggets are a solid under team when playing on the road, but that the Spurs are a solid over team when playing at home, so not going to be on this over-under too much, but definitely give me the Spurs plus 10.5. Coming into the home stretch here, guys, we've got the Detroit Pistons going on the road to take on the Dallas Mavericks. Detroit lost last night in a blowout. They lost by 22 points against the Chicago Bulls. We didn't see Cade playing that game. The question is going to be whether or not he plays in this one. I kind of tend to doubt it. I would think they're just kind of shutting him down for the end of the season here. Can't really blame them. Nothing to play for in Detroit right now. And really no good news coming out of this whole season. It's just been a disaster. Monty Williams doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. And in general, this team isn't looking too hot. But when they do have their starters out there, there have been some moments of hope. So I think maybe down the stretch we could see some positive things from them. But it's going to be a tough matchup for them, especially playing on black-to-back -back nights. And they're going up against the Dallas Mavericks team, who does have some stuff to play for still. They're only one game behind the LA Clippers. So if they could get a win and a Clippers loss or something like that with two games to go, they could still move up into that four seed and have home court advantage in their opening round playoff series. Dallas has both Luka and Kyrie on their injury report, so that's a little bit concerning. We're definitely going to have to keep a very close eye on that. Doncic is questionable for this game due to left ankle soreness, and we see Kyrie Irving has been ruled out for this game due to left hamstring soreness. So we are not going to be seeing the full-strength Dallas Mavericks. Keep a very close eye on the injury report for the Pistons. If we somehow magically see Cade play in this game, we will like the Pistons and the points quite a bit, but if not, we're going to be kind of off of this game. I do think the Mavs will win in. They could probably even win this game if both Luka and Kyrie sit out, but it seems really sketchy. Too much sketchy injury news. Not going to be on this game against the spread. Looking at the over-under for this one, we see that Detroit is an over team and playing on the road, but the Mavs are an under team at home. The thing is, though, if we see both Kyrie and Luka sit out, that does a lot to the over-and-under number, so we could see this change a lot. You're just going to have to check back, watch the injury reports for this one, guys, and make some of your own decisions based on who actually ends up being available for both of these teams in this game. In the last game we're going to look at tonight, we've got the Phoenix Suns going on the road to take on the Sacramento Kings. Right now, the Kings are down by eight points to the New Orleans Pelicans in the third quarter, so we don't know how that game ends up, but we do know that they're going to be playing in back-to-back -back nights on this one, and we expect them to have pretty much their full roster available, unless there's some weird late-game injuries. The Suns come into this game fresh off of a bounce-back win. They took down the Clippers. They went on the road and won that game 124-108. to It's really never know what you're going to get from the Phoenix Suns on any given night. It's made them a very difficult team to bet this season. Right now, looking at their injury report, it's looking totally clean, so they should be at 100% right now, and they need to be playing well. They need to do all that they can to get out of that seven seed. You don't want to be involved in this Western Conference play-in tournament. If you're going to have teams like the Lakers and the Warriors down there, anything could happen to you. The question for the Suns is always what version of KD and Booker are going to show up on a nightly basis. It's hard to know. It's very, very hard to know. But they're going to be in a pretty decent situation, this one, going up against a tired Sacramento Kings team that's not going to have Malik Monk. So that's been very, very tough for them, clearly, down the stretch here. They've lost three out of the last four going into that game against the Pelicans. And it's looking like there's a decent chance they could lose that game to the Pelicans also. We see the Kings are getting four and a half points in this game, but we also see that they're 16-22 and 22 against the spread at home and 5-9 and nine against the spread on no rest. Those are not good numbers, guys. We're going to go ahead and roll the dice on what version of Booker, KD, and Nurkic, and Beal that we're going to get. We are taking the Phoenix Suns. This is probably going to be our second biggest bet of the night on Phoenix, minus four and a half. I think they find a way to get the comfortable win in this one. They should be locked in. This should be like playoff mode Booker and playoff mode KD. So we should see a good game from them across the board against a very exhausted Kings team that's going to be kind of on their last legs, I would think, stumbling here to the end of the season, having a hard time, and who can really blame them at this point? That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description and check out stumptospread.com, and we'll see you guys on Saturday for some MLB action.